Hey everyone, I'm Dan. My girlfriend and I are building an expedition truck to travel Australia and potentially the world. So this week I've been building all the seals for the external doors and cupboards on the truck. I've already built the majority of them because I find it quite challenging to work everything out and build everything as well as filming on top. But I have left one seal still to do so I can show you guys the process and that's the slide out room seal. That's probably the most challenging one because I've got a pop top roof and a slide out room. So it, the roof has to lift and the room has to slide out and it all has to be sealed. So it's, it is quite challenging. I'm not sure if the way that I've done it is the best way to do it. I'm sure there's many ways that you could do this, but I'll take you around now and show you the way that I've chose to do it. And I'll show you the stuff that I've installed so far. And then we'll get into building the slide out room seal. All right, this is our external locker. So this is the ceiling face that I've made. It, I've used unequal angle, which is 30 mil by 20 mil by three mil thick aluminum angle. And what I've done is I've just welded it up into a rectangle and I've left about six mil of packing for the either side and the bottom and the top. So what that allows me to do is put this ceiling face in and it doesn't matter if the hole that it's going into is a little bit out of square, it's easy to make this frame square and I've just packed out I've just packed it out around the edges to, to make sure it's square and I've used, I've just countersunk some holes and used uh, 10 gauge metal tech screws to hold it in. And what I'm going to do now is get a flashing bent up and that flashing will run over the front of the aluminium cladding and then it'll be a right angle and it'll run down into this seal here over the top of the angle and then there'll be rubber strip or maybe um, like a pinch weld rubber seal that'll go on the inside here. And then I'll just put some hinges at the top and there'll be a door that goes in here and that, and it'll seal on this face back here. And this is basically what I've done for every door on the truck. This is the front door. And this is where things start to get a little bit challenging because it's a pop top roof and we want this door to open as one piece. It means that this seal has to be completely parallel and square with the seal behind it and the door has to be built in two parts. There'll be the lower half and the upper half on the pop top. So to allow it to open as one piece, it needs a common hinge line. So there'll be two hinges up here on the pop top and there'll be two hinges down here on the lower frame. This flashing was quite challenging to make because it's rounded at the top. I cut the, the face I cut this front profile out of two mil aluminium sheet and I cut the curve, the internal curve, out of the same two mil aluminium sheet. And then I got a 20 mil aluminium flat, flat bar, 20 mil by three mil, and I used that to create the curve and I welded that all in. And then the down here, down at the bottom, I just used the same uh, 20 by 20 angle to create the bottom seal and I had to make two of these one for one for this door and one for the back door so I'll lift the roof now and I'll set the camera up to show you how they lift parallel which will, will allow the door to be installed as one piece and then we'll have a look at the slide out room All right, so that's the roof lifted. So hopefully from that demonstration, you can see how this upper seal and the lower seal run parallel. And that'll allow the door to open as one piece by having the hinges in one, in one line. So as I said, there'll be two hinges here, there'll be two hinges down here, and they'll be in the exact same line. And that'll open this door, allow this door to open as one piece, which is something that we really want. A lot of pop tops that I see have uh, you know, the bottom door opens and the top door opens, but we don't want that. We want it to open as one piece, so 
I think this will allow us to do that. And this will be the same as the locker around there. Down here, I'll just have a flashing that runs along this face and then back returns back into this angle. And there'll be a rubber seal running up here and a rubber seal running all the way up around there. All right, so now we'll go and have a look at the slide-out room. This is where the slide-out room extends from. Now I'm just following the same method that I've used with all the other doors. There'll be a lower seal around the lower frame and then there'll be a seal around the pop-top roof frame. So I've already built the lower seal, we'll install that now and then I'll go and build the seal for the pop-top roof and we'll install that. Let's get started. All right, so I've fixed this seal in at both corners. Now, I, all I need to do is make sure it's, it's straight horizontally and straight in and out. And that's all you can really do, you know? There's no point in trying to make it level because the truck is, it's not level and it's never gonna be level. You just need to make sure everything is straight. So to do that, I'm just using a, a straight edge, just a level. I'm just gonna put it end to end and go along and pack it up where it needs to be packed up then I'll make sure, once I've got it straight that way, then I'll make sure it's straight in and out by putting the level on the back of it. And then I'll go along and I'll just fix the screws in and that'll be fine. Then we'll work on the uprights. All right, I've installed all the screws. It's pretty straight. It doesn't need to be 100% perfect when you're doing this sort of thing. If it's got a, a gap of about a mil, that's fine. Any more than a mil, I would probably have another look at it because you can get you can get one mil packers. So if you can pack it out a mil, that's fine. If it's a, if it's you know a bit less than a mil, then I'd just leave it. I wouldn't worry about it. All right. So now that we've got the seal of this seal in, I'm going to start on the upright. Now the main, the main thing with these uprights is that they need to be square off the bottom here and it needs to be parallel with the upright on the other side. So we don't want it to have a, a wind in it like that or like that, they need to be parallel. So the way I'm doing that is I'm getting my spirit level and I'm, I'm, I'm pushing the seal back so it's hard against the frame and flush on the outside then I'm putting my spirit level against the back of it and with a marker I'm just putting a little dot where the bubble is because you can't really go uh, you know with the lines of the spirit level because the truck as I said before it's not level so this is not plumb so I'm just putting a little dot on the on the glass there to mark where it is and then I can take the spirit level over to the other side when I do that upright and I can get it so it's in in the exact same plane and they're both parallel. So I've already done that. So now all I need to do is put the screws in just where it is and then I can check it for square off the sill. All right, I've installed all the screws down this upright. So now I'm gonna use the roofing square I'm going to put it in the corner here and check, for, check it for square. So it's leaning back quite a bit at the moment, there's a bit of a gap there. So I know that that needs to come back towards me a little bit. And the best way to do this is to get a straight edge, run it along the upright like that, and then run your square on that. That'll make the upright straight. Instead, you know, the upright might have a few bends in it, which will which will give you a false reading on your square. Whereas if you put a straight edge against it, it's going to give you end to end how straight it is and how square it is overall. So there's a bit of a gap at the top, so it needs to come out this way. So I'm going to loosen those screws off and put some packers in and pack it out till it's square.
I've straightened and fixed off both of the uprights on either side. So they're parallel, they're straight, they're square off the bottom. So the last thing to do is make sure the gap is the same at the top as what it is at the bottom. And if it's pretty good, then that's all it needs to be. Okay, that's two meters 90. And it's about two meters ninety, maybe that's about two meters ninety up there, maybe two meters eighty nine, which is which I'm which I'm happy with. If you split that either between each side, it's only half a mil either side, so that is close enough to perfect. Okay, so that's the bottom seal in. Now we'll go and we'll make the seal for the pop top. I'll show you how I weld those up with the, with the MIG and we'll install it. So this is the shape of the flashing. It looks like this. Now, as you can see, there's no 90 degree angles in there at all. So it's gonna be pretty hard to get it square using my roofing square. So what I'm gonna do is flick out the shape of it using a flick line on the, on the concrete floor in the shed. So I'll flick out a shape like this. I'll, I'll be able to put my square in the corners here and make sure these uprights are square. And then I'll be able to put the top pieces in and I'll know that everything is completely square. And when we put the slide out room in, it's all gonna line up nicely and we're not going to have any trouble so doing it like this where I f where you flick it out on the ground that's something that, that i learned from building roofs stick framing roofs as a carpenter that's what the old carpenters do they they'll flick out the whole roof on the ground and get all their angles and all their lengths and then they'll build it off that so i'll grab my flick line and we'll get started i've got my flick line i'm going to flick the shape out on the ground and then i'll cut it out and we'll weld it up All right, so now we've got a square marked out. We can use this to start making our flashing. That can be the two uprights. Now I'll just get the measurements for the top, for the ridge. What's it called? The, uh, the gable. I'll get the measurements for the gable and I'll mark them out and then we'll start building it. All right, so that's the shape of the flashing flicked out. Now we'll go and cut it all and I'll lay it on top of our shape and I'll tack it together. All right, I've cut all the pieces of aluminium for the flashing. The next thing I'm gonna do is drill the holes out for the metal tech screws to go through. It's a lot easier to drill them out now before, you, before I weld it up. I learnt that with some of the other flashings that I made. Uh, so I'm just drilling them out to take this screw. Is that in focus? Yep. So it's just a, a 10 gauge metal tech screw with a fine thread on it. I wanted with something with a fine thread because it will hold a lot better in thin steel. And I'm just drilling it, drilling it out with the clearance hole and I'm going to countersink it for the head. So we'll do that now, and then we'll weld it all up. I've welded a lot of aluminium with this build, and I've done it all with this MIG welder. And you can weld aluminium with pretty much any MIG that uses gas. All you need to do is get pure argon gas and get aluminium welding wire. I won't go into you know what the best settings are because it's gonna be different for each welder and it's something you sort of just need to start practicing and work out for yourself. But just because, you know, don't be afraid of welding aluminium. It's not difficult to do, it's easy to do. Just set your MIG up and give it a go.
The only other piece of advice I would give when you're using a MIG to weld aluminium is try and keep your lead for your gun lead as straight as possible because if it has too many bends in it, um, the the aluminium wire will struggle to struggle to get through. And take the pressure off the wire as much as you can, just so when it's feeding out, you can pinch it with your finger, and the feed will stop, but it won't, uh, you know, create a big bird's nest inside the machine. It's just light enough so you can pinch it with your finger and the, the wire will stop coming out and the wheel in the machine will just keep spinning over the top of the wire. That way, if your lead does have a bit of a bend in it, it won't cause a bird's nest inside your machine and you'll have to, you know, fix that every time. Okay, one more tip for welding aluminium. It will weld a lot nicer if it's clean, so get yourself a wire brush and just brush it off before you weld it. I'm pretty sure you should use a stainless steel wire brush, but I don't have one of those, so I'm just using a normal wire brush and it seems to work all right. Okay, there we have it. One slide out room flashing. Joins nice and clean. So just like the others, it'll be fixed through the holes and then there'll be a rubber seal running around here which will seal the slide-up room. I'll just flip it over and show you the back. So that's where I welded it. So I've welded the join, and then I've cut the weld off, the, the excess, and I've, and I've just rubbed it back to polish it up. So, the, so I, I just made sure that I welded it nice and hot, so it got a, a little bit of penetration, and that's all it needs just to hold it together. That's the center, and that's the other side. It's a bit glary, there we go. All right, so now we'll put it in that hole there. I've got the flashing fixed in, but already I'm starting to notice there's a few indiscrepancies. A few little, you know, things are just a bit different from one side to the other. So I'm just going to leave it where it is for now until I get the slide out room in, and then I'll be able to just put it to the seal of the slide out room. So I just wanted to show you guys how I'm going to flash the windows. I'm going to use this aluminium T section, and I'm going to make up frames just like what I've done for the doors. So I'll well, I will get, cut the aluminium section like this and miter all the corners into a square and then this frame will go inside the window frame just like that and the top half will seal along the aluminium sheeting on the truck and the bottom half the window will sit in there and the window will seal along the bottom just with some uh, I'll just use some silicon to seal it. A lot of people, when I started thinking about the windows, a lot of people told me just to get them made by some caravan window manufacturer. But I don't like the look of those windows. Uh, I just want to use black aluminium domestic window section. So I'm going to make up these flashings and they will just fix inside the window frame and then the windows will just silicon inside these flashings and it'll be 100% waterproof and I think it'll look a lot nicer than you know, the caravan or motorhome window frames that you see around. 
I won't go through the whole process of welding them all up and fixing them in because it's literally exactly the same as what I've just done for the, for the slide out room flashing. Uh, that, so that's it for this week. Thank you guys so much for watching. There's a few more people starting to watch this channel now, so I really appreciate that. And if you guys think any, you know, if you would like to share these videos with anybody else that you think might enjoy them, I'd really appreciate that as well. So that's it, and see you next week.